It's still the biggest day in NASCAR history. To celebrate America's birthday, the president went to a stock car race. Not just any race. This was the big race, Daytona, on the day the king of the sport scored his landmark 200th victory. With all the presidents that's ever been in the United States, this is the first one that's ever showed up at a racetrack. So everybody's got to go from that from a racing standpoint. And I wanted to be the one that was able to, to welcome him to Grand National Races. Proud to be an American could be NASCAR's motto. It's appropriate for its stars to pal around with presidents. But King Richard Petty and the sport over which he reigns did not always travel in such prestigious company. Richard and racing grew up together from the humble beginnings in the hills of North Carolina. Like Ralph Earnhardt, Lee Petty was a great racer whose greatest contribution to NASCAR history was his son. Richard would become the king, but his dad laid the foundation for that kingdom back in 1950. This is something I really like to do. I feel comfortable with it. I think we can win races, and I think we can make a living out of it. So then he just stopped his trucking business and, and just, uh, just went into racing full time. Fiercely independent, Lee didn't drive for others. Instead, he built petty enterprises. At first, the family team, eventually the Chrysler Corporation factory team. Independent to the end, Lee walked away from racing the day he retired. Richard's ascension began as a teenager. He and his brother Maurice took one of Lee's convertibles to a NASCAR race. And Richard's been going ever since. I was driving, my father was driving, and then my brother wanted to start driving. So he, he drove, I don't know, 10 or 12 races and uh, did pretty good. And in fact, he done better to begin with than I did. But uh, he had a wreck somewhere, I think Columbia, South Carolina, turned the car over and, a couple times. And he got out of it and he said, Tell you what, he says, you drive the car, I'll work on it. Through the glory years, Maurice was a chief mechanic, and the factory backed Petty Enterprises, Plymouth, and Dodges were the ultimate NASCAR weapons. Racing 40 or 50 times a year before the start of the so called modern era, Richard racked up the wins, and no season for any NASCAR star can match the 1967 season for Petty Enterprises. 27 wins, 10 of them in a row, led to the crowning of the king. But for the most part, Richard and his family were held up as a symbol of the sport. Not just winners, but winners the world could be proud of. Richard has set a standard for dealing with the public and sponsors and the media of honesty, charm, availability. And I can't think of a significant Winston Cup driver that's come into the sport in the last 25 years that hasn't watched that, noticed it, and tried to emulate it. In 1992, after 35 years in the cockpit, Richard Petty finally closed his driving career with an epic farewell tour that ranks as one of the great fan fests in NASCAR history. He has contributed so much to this sport. So many wins, so many championships, so many memories. When I think of, of a perfect race car driver, but yet spokesperson, I, you know, I look at Richard Petty. He is, he is the dynasty that we all want to be.